Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel, it's Dr. Alessandro. And today's video, I'm gonna to explain to you, well, some of the patient questions that I've had about, well, bony outcroppings in the mouth. So a patient will ask me, hey doc, what are these bony things that are next to my tongue down here? Or what's this bony thing up on the roof of my mouth? So we'll explore that today because most of the time, these are things that are totally normal and they're called tori. The singular is torus. That's for the top part of the mouth typically uh, where there's usually just one big bony, well, knob as it were, if you want to call it that. Um, outcropping is probably a more proper term. Uh, same thing on on the bottom teeth or you know on the tongue side towards the bottom teeth. Typically we have them on each side and now what I'm going to tell everybody is that about a third of the population has one, the other, or both. So it's about a third of the people that you see walking around, around you, uh, they typically have these sorts of bony outcroppings called a torus on the upper, on the palate, or tori on the lower jaw, which is on the tongue side, uh, towards the front to middle of the teeth, sometimes extending towards the molars. So I'll give you a bird's eye view of this in just a moment. That way you better see and understand uh, what these are. Now, tori are slow growing typically. So it takes years for them to form, develop, and kind of grow bigger and bigger. So over the course of a person's life, a typical person's life, they'll kind of grow slowly. Uh, sometimes it goes faster for some people than others. Uh, if you are a clencher or grinder, which I am, uh, they can go faster. Uh, so I, I wish I had a stone model of my mouth from when I was a dental student and to compare it to where my tori are today. Uh, I think that they have quite frankly at least doubled in size uh, in 20 years or so. Uh, so they can grow kind of quick um, the more you're kind of clenching and grinding your teeth. Uh, but for the most part, they typically tend to be fairly small for most folks. Uh, for some folks, they can get really big, and that becomes a problem if these people need dental x-rays, especially with the bigger, bulkier digital dental sensors for taking cavity checking x-rays or an x-ray to maybe see the tip of the root to see the health of the nerve of the tooth and or if there's an infection around the base of the root or things along those lines. So. Without further ado, I'm gonna show you what tori look like because I have tori in my own mouth on the lower and they serve as a great example. That way you can kind of understand what you might be feeling in your mouth and uh, what they are and what to expect. Okay, so now you've had a view of what my tori look like on the lower. Uh, we all have their different sizes, different shapes. They can come, they don't have to be symmetrical. They can be asymmetrical. Uh, so we see them in all different forms. Um, sometimes they can be really, really big and can block access to taking dental x-rays uh, if they get really large. And so uh, that said, I wish I had a, a maxillary torus so I could show you I don't, uh, but be assured that about a third of the people around do have something. And so uh, if you do feel like on the roof of your mouth, you have a bony growth, you know, make sure that your dentist sees it. But most of the time they're gonna tell you, oh yeah, that's your torus, um, because that's what it is. Uh, nevertheless, if you do have changes, that is bony changes in your mouth, by all means, have them looked at by your dentist uh, because they may be tori, but in rare occasions they may not be. And so we want to make sure that you are staying as healthy and careful as you can. be. So that said, thank you so much for joining me on this video. Thank you for joining my channel. If you like, please, by all means, subscribe. And hope you're all staying well and healthy. Take care and until next time.